This is Greg Reese. I'm in Moscow, Russia here with Charles Bowsman, who is somewhat of an expert between the bridge of America and Russia. We're going to talk about Russia and uh, what America could be if we wanted it to be. Uh, Charles, thank you for joining me. Hey, good to be here. So first tell us a little bit about your background with Russia and what brought you to Russia today, why you're here today, please. Okay, well, I've been coming here, living here on and off for the last 35 years. So I've seen this country uh, evolve since con the fall of communism. And actually, I was here during communism for the last couple of years. Um, uh, and I'm here this time. Uh, I've been here three and a half years uh, because I was, I'm a January 6th refugee. And um, I was in the Capitol building and I had to flee basically to Russia to avoid getting arrested. So I want to come home, uh, but uh, I'm here for now. The difference in America is that it seems like the whole system is, is uh, designed to sort of rip people off. You know, like, I'll give you an example. Like cell phone service here costs about $10 a month. Uh, internet, uh, uh, home internet with TV and like 100 channels cost about $10 a month. And... You know, the equivalent in America is $100 or more. And, okay, prices here are lower because there's a different price sort of, uh, you know, input costs and everything. But it's not 10 times. You were saying uh, earlier the groceries for you, your wife, four kids is about 350 U.S. dollars a month, somewhere about that? Yeah, that's about what we pay here, yeah. And kindergarten, five days a week with meals included is about... Uh, 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Yeah. Higher education is free? Uh, some of it is free, some of it is paid, but if it's paid, it's subsidized, so it's actually very affordable. Healthcare is free, basically? Um, it's two tiers. So there's the free, and then uh, there's the private sector, which is still incredibly, I mean, it's like 50 times less than in, in the U.S. And what's the tax scheme here? Like, I know in America, it's about a third is the, what the IRS wants, is a third of your money. Here, it's about 10% or something like it's, that? It's uh, 13%. Living here is like Europe. You know, in Europe, you have also very good public services, transportation, education, health care, and so on and so forth. But they manage that by, uh, by uh, taxing people at about 50% or more. Um, Russia manages to do the same thing by taxing their, their raw materials. Russians are very good at, uh, you know, big building projects, roads, highways, uh, public transportation. I mean, when they build a metro station, it's like, you know, this massive steel and concrete thing that you can tell is built to last for hundreds of years. Uh, they're very well done. You see this endless investment in parks, sidewalks, um, uh, new metro stations, new buses, new bus stops. I mean, it's, it's endless. And one of the reasons they can do this so efficiently is because they have cheap energy. Their energy is practically free. And it's done to, to do nice things for people. Uh, for example, a little example is playgrounds. There's this endless number of playgrounds everywhere you walk in Moscow, in every neighborhood. And I'm always struck about how modern they are and how cool they are and cutting edge and much better than the playgrounds, you know, in my neighborhood in, in Pennsylvania. And you even said you had a, in the building that you live in, there is like an art class in that building that your children can go to for free to study art from a professional as well, right? Yeah, it's completely free. Uh, it's taught by a guy who could be a professor in an American art academy. Another example, just across the street, there's a music school uh, where my little girls go uh, for singing lessons. Uh, one goes there for free. Uh, it's totally subsidized by the city. And then uh, my second daughter, we pay $50 a month, uh, excuse me, $30 a month for eight lessons a month. The way I think of what Christian nationalism is, it's nationalist because it puts the interests of the people first, of the nation first. So it serves the people, and it does so according to Christian principles. I would say that Russia today is Christian nationalism light, okay? There are aspects of Russian society that are definitely not Christian. For example, they still have government-subsidized abortion here. But uh, in other ways, you know, they've embraced Christian values and Christian traditions and Christian attitudes towards uh, the primacy of the family. And if you look at 
pre-revolution Russia, well, that was definitely uh, Christian nationalism, the way I described it. The whole idea of the government was to do the best for the people. The monarch was a, just a complete servant of the people, and the whole government was run on avowedly, you know, self-consciously Christian principles. You see more and more people moving here um, from Europe and from the U.S. And if and from Europe, it's mostly people from Germany. Um, and personally, I think it's going to grow and it's going to turn into a lot of people. It's it's a uh, Russia is an enormously attractive place for people looking for a Christian society in which to live and where, where to be relatively free. I do a lot of work with. Uh, uh, Orthodox Christian journalism, and I know a lot about these. There have been a lot of prophecies by Orthodox saints, both in Russia and outside Russia, about what's going to happen here. And they all say that Russia is going to become this like a Noah's Ark for all the people in the world who have not lost their sanity and not lost their, if not their love for God, at least their their embrace of traditional family values. How did it turn out that? Uh, this country, Russia, controls this enormous landmass, yeah? But it's only about 140 million people, and it's definitely not enough. You need like a, a billion people, really, to fill this large of a country, and it has the resources to support that kind of a population. And one of the things that some Christians say is, well, this is actually God's will, that he left this giant country relatively empty, um, with the idea that it would then be filled by people from all over the world who would come here and uh, seek protection from uh, the craziness that's happening that seems to be taking over the West. Well, there you have it, folks. If you want to move to Russia, move to Russia. Uh, by the time you watch this video, God willing, I'll be back in the United States. But for now, from Moscow, Russia, and Infowars.com, this is Greg Reese.